Now, I want to start things off with you, my friend, uh, building off a conversation that we had last week, last time we had, or not last week, last time we had you on the show, where uh, you were co-hosting with me when the Ed Sheeran verdict got announced, where Ed Sheeran was found not liable for copyright infringement for his song, Thinking Out Loud. A jury found that it was not a... uh, a ripoff of the Marvin Gaye song. Let's get it on. No damages. There are appeals going on. Hopefully those won't go anywhere because as we've said before, these kind of lawsuits are bad for creators. They are frivolous copyright claims, or at least they should be frivolous. And they tend to get in the way of future creativity because we don't want songwriters constantly being afraid of the thought in the back of their head. Oh no, is this song that I'm writing going to be, am I going to be sued for copyright infringement? Because it happens to sound like some song that came before. Yeah. And You and I had talked about the question of whether a jury verdict like this will hopefully allow songwriters to create a a sigh of relief. Will songwriters go, well, Ed Sheeran didn't get found liable for copyright infringement by a jury, so future songwriters can feel safe. And the point I made, which I still stand by, is what's really going to make songwriters build a sigh of relief is not when the juries say not liable. It's when more judges have the courage to say, We're throwing this case out because it's so ridiculous. We're not even going to let a jury hear it Mm -hmm. because that's the difference between an inexpensive litigation for a defendant and a very expensive litigation for a defendant. And so we have an update in that regard. We are uh, we actually had a lawsuit that was thrown out in a way that is great for songwriters. And let me tell you a little bit about it. On June 5th, a federal judge dismissed a copyright lawsuit by the band Article Sound System. This is a reggae group that alleged that uh, the international pop star Dua Lipa infringed uh, with her song Levitating, the massive, super crazy Uh hit Levitating, infringed on their 2017 reggae song Live Your Life. Now, if you're going into your data banks right now thinking hard, what is the Article Sound System song Live Your Life? Trust me, you've probably never heard it before. Okay. Uh, it was virtually unknown, did not, wasn't any kind of hit anywhere in the world. And the only similarity between Dua Lipa's Levitating and this Article Sound System song, Live Your Life, which I believe you can't even get on streaming services, you have to find it on SoundCloud, is uh, is like they kind of have the same Red kind flag. of... Yeah, they have like <laughs> a similar melodic groove, like, you know, the, okay. the Dua Lipa song, ba-da, 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 yeah. ba-da. So Article Sound System has a similar kind of groove to it, but no music, no lyrical similarity. You know, nothing else about the song is the same. Nothing else about the melody is the same. And again, Dua Lipa would have never known about this song, right? Because it was super obscure and there's no way like Dua Lipa would have ran into it. And for Dua Lipa, that wound up being the thing that got this thing thrown out. So what happened in this case and it's it actually similar to what, what the way that the jury came down in the Ed Sheeran case is under federal copyright law, Katie, before you can even get to the question of whether two songs are similar, right? Before you get to this question of what's called substantial similarity, you have to prove that the defendant had access to your song mm-hmm. because technically under copyright law, if two songs are similar, but the the defendant never heard the plaintiff's song then there's no infringement. Technically, if two people on opposite sides of the country like happen to write the exact same song and didn't hear each other's song, then both of them would have a valid copyright and neither infringes on the other. Yeah. And so that's that's what that wound up being what saved Dua Lipa in this case and got the case thrown out by a judge because a judge said to the article sound system folks, you have not even come close to proving that international pop star Dua Lipa came across your piddling little reggae song that was somewhere on SoundCloud. And you're going to like this, okay? Because obviously when Article Sound System filed their lawsuit, they had to at least present the argument for how Dua Lipa could have found out about this song and thus thus infringed on their song. And so here's what they argued. Um, All right, so... Uh, you ever like see those uh, conspiracy theory movies where like the crazy conspiracy theory person's like drawing like, like has like strings. the red yarn connecting yeah. <laughs> things together? This is what this is going to be. OK, here's okay. what article S- sound system alleged, according to the judge's ruling. OK, they said, here's how she got access because Dua Lipa, one of Dua Lipa's co-writers on the song 
had previously worked with a woman who allegedly taught guitar. Oh, sorry. Let me, let me start again. One of Dua Lipa's co because this is so insane. Yeah. One of Dua Lipa's co writers, not even Dua Lipa, okay. one of Dua Lipa's co writers previously worked with a woman who was allegedly taught guitar by the brother in law of one of the band members of Article Sound System. Okay. So I see Lauren and... counting with her fingers. That's like six degree what the hell, right? Wait, say, like the... say it one more time. Say it one more All time. All right. Okay. So Dua Lipa wrote this song, right? She wrote it with a co-writer. Uh-huh. That co-writer previously worked with a woman who was allegedly taught guitar by the brother-in-law of one of the band members of Article Sound System. And what through that is tangled allegedly... web... The allegedly, allegedly talk guitar. <laughs> so somewhere in there, they're like, "All right, we think she taught guitar to him, and that's how it got there." So that was their theory of access, and since that strained credulity, the judge threw the case out. And I think they're gonna, the judge is gonna give the the band another opportunity to file their complaint because usually with cases like this, you you give the plaintiff a couple opportunities before you dismiss the case with prejudice, which means you can't bring it again, but. As hilarious as this is, and it is pretty hilarious, this is the kind of thing we want to see. We want to see more cases where copyright lawsuits get thrown out, not in the jury phase, Mm -hmm. but well before the motion practice, because that, you know, that will, that's the kind of thing that sends a message to people who want to file these kind of frivolous copyright claims. Don't bother because you're not going to get very far. And that's the kind of thing that's going to help future creators feel safe and protected in their music and hopefully lead to a situation where insurance companies can lower their rates because they know there's less of a risk of protracted litigation that can be very expensive to cover. So, yay, we like to see this kind of thing. This is the kind of copyright ruling we need, not jury verdicts, because by then it's already gotten too expensive for a songwriter. But crazy, ridiculous uh, you know, the person who taught guitar to the brother-in-law of the dog kind of access cases uh, get these yeah. things thrown out. You know, it does bring up an interesting question that I'm curious your answer to. And it's the whole, the immediate association is not actually with Dua Lipa. It's Dua Lipa's co-writer, new <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question is, even though they're suing Dua Lipa, what would happen if I wrote a song, let's say I wrote a song with you mm-hmm. and maybe it was by accident. Like you didn't even consciously know you were doing it. You heard a song and then you came into our co-write and you kind of like took elements of that song just cause you, you know, it's kind of like in your brain and we wrote a song together and it sounded like another song, but like, I didn't know that you heard another song and maybe had that song in the back of your head. It's not my fault that this happened. Could I still get sued? Obviously that's, you know, not considering the fact that like, should, should either of us be in trouble? It would depend on how similar it was, but like, what, like, what would my implication be in there? Because it's like, I didn't know. I didn't I didn't know. <laughs> I, well, I should mention that Dua Lipa wasn't the only person sued in this case, right? All, all the people, all, all, all the people who wrote, I'm sure the publishing company was sued as well. Um, you know, it, it it's the time honored litigation tactic of sue everything that moves. Anyone yeah. that's within a thousand feet a of, money grab, of that, if you will. If, yeah, you're, you're going to bring <laughs> them into the lawsuit. And right. Oftentimes with songwriting sessions, if you have multiple writers on a song, which is usually the way songs are written these days, There's really only, you know, if there is infringement, it's usually only one person's fault if you can, because it's, it's the person who had the melody stuck in their head somewhere that, and then it got into the songwriting session and generally everybody who owns the copyright is going to get sued on it. Right. Yeah. And what you sometimes see in split sheets, remember we talked about those paper split sheets Mm -hmm. is you might have an indemnification in there that says, if I bring in something that you know, gets us sued, I agree to cover everybody else's losses. Now, good luck proving that. Yeah. And, hurt, yeah. You know, so <laughs> generally, like everybody's on the hook, which is all the more reason why these kind of claims are really crummy yeah. and 
are going to get, because now like you're not just afraid of something getting stuck in your head that you accidentally bring into a songwriting session. You're afraid of one of your co-writers doing it and it's not yeah. even your fault. Yeah. And so now you're being very careful about who you co-write with and you're starting to see artists now who will record their entire songwriting sessions with co-writers like mm-hmm. every word that is spoken so that they can trace back all the melodies and everything that's said and everything that's brought in so that if there ever is a lawsuit, there is kind of a something of a paper trail to figure out who came up with what and where the different concepts came from. Yeah. And I don't want to live in that world. That seems like yeah. a really crappy way to create, but our over litigiousness, our, our obsession with, you know, just over enforcement of copyright has brought it to this place where creativity gets brought to a halt. And something that we need yeah. to remember about copyright, let me just uh, mention this because it's very important, is copyright law absolutely exists to encourage creativity. And it's in there in the Constitution, the clause that allows Congress to create copyright law. The first line of it says, to promote the progress of science and useful arts. We create copyright law to encourage people to create. If you have a monopoly over the thing that you create through a copyright, you will be incentivized to create. And so generally copyrights are great for that. But make no mistake, too much copyright law and over enforcement of copyright law uh, can be just as devastating to creativity as not enough copyright law. And you really have to find that balance. And part of it is making sure that we don't overprotect past rights at the expense of future creators creating stuff. Yeah, and I think that in a lot of cases, not all, but in a lot of cases recently, with estates suing artists or small artists suing big artists, it's like, is this not clearly a money grab? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it feels like it's not even genuine about, hey, this is the integrity of our art. It's just like, hey, maybe I can get like a quick book out of this. <laughs> not that it's quick or cheap for them to actually do it, but I it feels that way because it, Otherwise, it just feels so silly, to be honest with you. And maybe that's what bothers me about a lot of these cases is it's rare. I mean, with the you know, with a lot of these copyright cases, certainly not all of them, but some of them, a lot of them are being brought by the estates of creators. So we're not even benefiting the creators at this point. The creator is long gone. And maybe the creator doesn't really care that somebody made something new that kind of sounds like their stuff because creators tend to be chill. You know know. who's not chill? They're talentless heirs. Yeah, who want the money? Who are just trying to make a buck. Yeah. come on. That's what really, like, irritates me about it. And I don't know. I kind of really believe that saying that, like, there are no original thoughts I, I don't know that it's 100% true. I'm sure there is some stuff that has gone uninvented before. But, like, I feel like generally speaking, even when it comes to music, like, and we said this last time, but we're we're funneling through a lot of the same stuff. And that doesn't – that's not bad. That's not a bad thing. But when you try to act like, you know, oh, what I did is so groundbreaking that if something mildly resembles it, like – I must reap all the benefits. It just seems so silly to me. Because again, most in most cases, it is not genuine these days. It's just like, it just feels like it's for a money grab or for or for attention to be in the news. You know, like this band, maybe their band's going to get more press now just because they like did that thing, even though they didn't want, they knew they wouldn't win. But like, it's a way to just get seen. Well, it has probably led to a lot of people finding the article sound system SoundCloud account <laughs> such that they've probably gotten more streams on their song in the last six months than yeah. they've had ever. Mm-hmm. 